Today I show you speed tests and temperature comparison between an NVMe that you install without the heatsink and also afterwards I added the heatsink and I did the same test for you so you can see that it's really better to have a heatsink on the NVMe. First I installed the Crucial T500 Pro NVMe SSD M.2 without the heatsink because I bought it, uh, I couldn't find the version with the heatsink and then I installed the Arctic M2 Pro heatsink on the SSD and I reinstalled it in the computer to continue the test and as you would expect there is a really big difference in the burst temperature it gets hot much slower huge difference doesn't even get warm okay I'll do a few more tests I already know it. This is gonna be like that. This was the final result and I was really happy with it. So if this is what you want to see, that's it. That's the video. And if you want to see the actual tests, here is how I prepare the test files. I have 70 gigabyte of video files to transfer. And I also did the speed test with Crystal Disk Mark and the full, full write test on the whole drive to make sure that the speed doesn't go lower. Also the NVMe is 2.0 instead of 1.4 for the other the system SSD. First I start with the NVMe the Crucial T500. On the T drive is the Crucial drive and it's without the heatsink now. The temperature gets, you will see, it gets a little bit hot really quickly when it's doing the test it reaches even 80 plus so it's more than 80 degrees celsius very fast when it's at 81 now for example also after the tests are stopped it takes a bit of time but not a lot to cool down because there's airflow in the case so it's not that bad actually to have the nvme drive without the cooler but if you transfer many files for a long time it's really better to have a heatsink and i'll show you in the few following tests the software to upgrade the firmware this crucial storage executive i don't know why they call it like this it's very slow i guess it means it's executive like it's really slow to execute or something like this i don't know it's really slow very slow to start now i do a test to write from the c drive and then to the t drive the crucial and then write to itself the speed is pretty good but I didn't see the 7, 7 gigabits per second or 7.3. It was about 2.2 like that. And it's still getting hot. So it's cooling down a little bit. I refresh on Crystal Disk Info here. And now we're doing the heavy test. I'm going to use this H2 test W. I always use this program. And I make sure the drive is empty to test as much as possible from the drive. When this one starts, you will see the real real use when you fill up the disk, when you fill up the SSD, what speed you would expect to see from this drive, because the speed will get lower. As you see, it's 400, even 400, it reached 400. That test, I stopped it earlier because I wasn't sure if it's a good idea to really stress test the NVMe so much without the heatsink. And I will do now another test so you see I have I prepare everything here ready to ready to do the test again with the crystal disk mark. The same test with the crystal disk mark after installing the heatsink. The I took out the NVMe, installed the Arctic M2 Pro, and now the temperature is about 51, 52 while it's doing 7 gigabits per second, even 7.3. It only reached 60 something while I was doing the test. And I continue to do the write test from the C drive and then write, read and write onto itself. And it reached 61 degrees Celsius. I mean, it's much lower than before. Before it was showing 81 and more. And now it's 60, it reached 63 now. I don't know what it's doing actually. Probably the, the heat sink keeps that temperature. So it will have a little bit of a more time to slow down, to cool down. It will reach the higher temperatures even with the heatsink if you keep stressing it. But here I was doing the full disk write and again it's not reaching 80 degrees or more like before. But if it does reach at higher temperature it's much slower to get there.
after the drive is fully written you will see now that is the speed is more than 1.45 gigabits per second average so it was faster to write to the whole drive so it's really helping to have the heatsink and normally you wouldn't write so much the whole drive at once if you're wondering if you need a heatsink or not if you want faster speed and not to stress the nvme too much usually a heatsink is not expensive if it's aftermarket but you can also get the the nvme ssd with the heatsink from the manufacturer this one for example it was just a little bit more expensive but i couldn't find the model with the heatsink it was sold out so i bought without the heatsink and the separate cooler the separate uh, heatsink thanks for watching